my name is Miranda and today I'm here to review the new book The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is my first book that I've read by her. I think it said she wrote some YA and some adult ones but this is the first book I have read by her. It's a new one that just came out in January I believe and it is adding to my pile of I don't know why but for some reason this year I've just been flying through a bunch of romance books and I think it's mainly because there were a lot that I wanted to read but then also like I've been really trying to keep up with new books specifically this year and Goodreads I see like every month they're like oh here are like the best books of the month and they divide them by categories and romance has its own category so I think that's why I've been so on top of them is because like I see so many of them but I definitely like need breaks in between reading them because I feel like they can get a bit repetitive <laughs> you know like especially if there's that in like the same time or same kind of story. So for example, the X talk, the one thing that I think it had going against it that was personal to me that wouldn't if you hadn't read the book that I had read earlier was that it's set in a radio station. Like that's the main thing. And it's about two co-workers who are enemies to lovers. And it's centered around them making a podcast about them pretending to be exes. And now they're making a podcast giving relationship advice. I literally at the start of January, I think, read a book called 10 Rules for Faking It, which is different in kind of everything else, but is also set in a radio station about co-workers falling in love and deals with a dating kind of radio show that they make. So it was just funny that all this kind of new stuff that I think that was supposed to feel like unique and like, oh, I haven't read a romance book like this. I literally had just read one two months ago with most of this stuff in it. It was obviously very different. Like the characters had different kind of personalities. Like one really liked radio, one didn't. The love interests were very, very different and the books themselves very very different like I've said 10 things I hate about you is so PG like it's literally perfect if you're someone that doesn't like like super steamy romances or if you know someone who doesn't like super steamy romances like your grandma maybe she just wants to read a cute wholesome romance this one on the other hand the x talk apparently it's named after the sex talk which I didn't even comprehend <laughs> until they said it in the book that I was like oh yeah I guess that does kind of sound like the sex talk but I guess the sex talk isn't like a saying that like you hear outside of like its generalized area you know what I mean like no one's ever like that's like the sex talk like it's the sex talk so going past that the main story like I said is about these two co-workers who don't get along at work Shay and Dominic it's from it's only from Shay's point of view which was a dis bit disappointing because like I said I really have learned that I love romance books that are both points of view because I just like being able to see both sides of a story and stuff like that and get to know the each character as well as the other one because I feel like with this like I knew Shay really well but Dominic remained a mystery pretty much for all of it because I still never did get his point of view. Shay has been at the radio station for 10 years and really is committed to being there. She's a producer and Dominic has just showed up. He's this hotshot that's like younger and he has his degree, his master's degree that he always talks about and they just constantly butt heads about like what to do. So when the radio station has to take some financial cuts and Shay's show gets canceled, the manager of the show decides to put her and Dominic together and make them pretend to be like they dated and broke up and then make the show that's supposed to be basically like exes giving relationship advice and talking about relationships and stuff like that. And the funny thing is like I'm like okay I can get on board for this and it really made me question not even really just like a huh that's interesting look at my integrity because like one of the big issues is they're like we're lying to people about like pretending to date and like this just feels wrong journalism is about truth and I was just like and like was such a big thing and I was kind of like bro I've read so many romance books and just books in general where they lie about things that are way bigger than this and like they're not even keeping it a secret from each other so we're already off on a way better foot than some of the other couples that I've gotten into so it was just funny that like they were so stressed out about that and I was like meh it's, it's not a thing. Even the book I'm reading now, they're fake dating and they've told like so many people <laughs> and then I'm like, isn't this going to come out that you're telling so many people? But in this one, they were like, we have to keep it a secret at all costs. I cannot even let my mother know. I cannot let my family know. And I'm just like, it's not that big a deal. Like people lie all the time on the internet. Like I don't think people are going to be really upset if like it comes out and then I don't know maybe that was just me because I was like you you read we live in a world where you constantly do read about like TikTok stars who are lying about their ages or are just lying about something that I'm like 
I can just roll with it like it's not even a big thing. So the characters themselves I thought were really interesting and dynamic. Like I said I wish I could have gotten to learn more about Dominic because I do think he was somewhat more interesting. I feel like that's mean to say but I just feel like I liked more of his life and like learning about him and the stuff that we did get about him because I mean he had this whole previous life before he moved there obviously and I just would have liked to know what was that about? Like, where are your motivations and stuff like that, aside from just learning it vis-a-vis -vis Shay. Shay, on the other hand, was a hot mess, and we loved her for it, you know? I will say that, like, the thing that bugged me the most, and you're gonna know why it bugged me the most, was just Shay is supposed to be, like, so quirky and just, like, so relatable, and of course, like, the way they describe her, she's like, I've got bangs, brown hair, I wear glasses, and I'm just like, really? Really? I'm tired of the relatable girl or the girl that's like doesn't think she's like good enough or pretty enough or it's just like I'm just okay, you know, is always like brown hair and a little curvy but never too curvy and wears glasses and stuff and I was just like <sighs> and it's just like the disconnect between like that and then like the guys they fall for being like you're the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Like that's fine. Everyone wants a partner that's gonna say that to me but I just hate how it's supposed to be like, you know, like they don't see themselves as beautiful, but the guys do. So that makes it okay. And that's what finally allows them to feel sexy. I'm just like, really? Really? That's what we're going with in 2021? And especially seeing, like, she has glasses, the author, so I'll give it to her. But I don't think she has brown hair. And I'm just like, you know what? People who don't have brown hair, you're not allowed to pick on brown hair as a flaw or anything like that. I think a lot of brown hair people have been through that moment sometime in their life where they wish they were blonde and we've all had to either make peace with it or it still bugs us and just don't just don't bring it up okay we know we know that the blonde is what barbie looks like okay so i felt like it did take me a little bit to get warmed up to her and i thought what was really interesting was the flip in their personalities because when they first started dominic was the one that was like i don't want to lie like this makes me feel uncomfortable and she was the one that was convincing him and then he was okay with it and she's the one that's like I just I don't know about this lying thing man and I'm like why couldn't we consistently have Dominic be the one that's unsure about the lying thing and Shay has to convince him like it just felt weird to flip it all of a sudden and make it seem like I don't know like Dominic was just wishy-washy and really didn't have a personality I don't know it was very very strange I mean I liked it don't get me wrong I just don't think it's like my favorite romance book out there because I feel like the characters could have been developed a lot more and then the ending was so over dramatic y'all like it was just so like airport last minute rushing you know that kind of moment where I was just like this would never ever ever happen in real life like I like when it's more of a like subtle if they do break up like they just make up or you show up for them for like an event like if you're like the date for the wedding and then you break up like still show up at the wedding I think that's really cute what they did with the whole just big, I was like, no. Especially considering how we knew what these characters were like. It didn't fit their personalities at all. And I feel like it was just put in there to be like, look at this big, fancy, fun moment we had. And I was just like, <sighs> it also had this moment where I think these, this is like shipped had this issue where these books are like trying to take on like these women who work in careers that their bosses are like misogynistic but not like not like super obviously but like obviously to us because like you have to write it so it's like obvious to the reader but somehow the characters aren't getting it then like never deals with the fallout of it and I'm just always like I see where you were going but it seems like you just put this character in as a sexist douche just to have some conflict and not actually have resolution and that's a little bit frustrating as well but the things I did like I think their relationship was really cute and I think you could really see like what bonded them and I think right out of the gate like geez quickest enemies to lovers I have ever seen in my life I will tell you that I think there was a really good kind of story about Shay's mom getting remarried because Shay's dad had passed away 10 years ago and that was a big effect on her life so I think it was a nice tie into grief and how that can still affect you and shape your choices and your decisions even after a long time I think that was a nice exploration of all that and I think that I will definitely be reading more of what the author writes because I think the characters were super interesting and I feel like Again, it's because I've been reading so many, but like you think it's like interesting that like, oh, the guy's younger in this one. Normally it's the girl that's younger, but I literally just read Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey. And that one, the guy was younger and they kept being like, oh my gosh, you're seven years younger. This is never going to work. So I appreciate that in this one. 
they were just kind of like, so you're five years younger. Do you think this will work? And he was like, yeah, I like you. And she was like, I like you too. And then the age thing just wasn't an issue. Like I like that so much more than bringing it up every single time. So I ended up giving this book four and a half out of five stars. If you have read it, please feel free to leave your thoughts about it down in the comments. Also make sure this video, also make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will see you guys next time. Bye.